Hi, welcome to The Stitch. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilting talk show. Join us as we chat about current topics in the quilting world, uh, techniques to improve your own projects, and fun stories about our quilts. Um, our episodes come out monthly and complemented by virtual sew-ins, podcasts, and you can learn more about us at thestitchtvshow.com. So what has been going on this month, Lynn? Well, I took some classes. I took a really exciting class. I, um, our guild brings in national teachers, and I took a class from Sue Nichols on fused applique. It was really good. Which I enjoyed is it. Fun because Lynn also teaches that. So <laughs> just to prove that even teachers can continue to learn. Oh, I think you have to. Yeah. I, and I learned stuff that I was like, oh, brilliant. That's worth. You know, I always look for those. Um, that's worth the price of the class comment mm -hmm. or nugget of information. And I got that. And I was like, oh, that's worth the price of the class. So I feel like I spent my money well and had a great experience. She's a fantastic teacher. If you don't know Sue Nichols, she has the Beatles quilt in mm -hmm. the National Quilt Museum, and she won Best of Show. I don't remember what year, but it's been a few years ago. Yeah. But it's I would say it's in the 90s, I think. Yeah, and I took her... Um feather class. So I've done free motion quilting for years, but I took it and, uh, you know, again, I got that one tip where I was like, oh, that is a good tip. That is a good tip. Yes. And she, and you know what else about that? And, and this is probably my own like thought process that I just needed to get over. But like, I always looked at applique and thought, oh, hand is the best. If you're not doing hand, it's not show quality or show worthy. And she's like, all of my appliques fused, and she wins shows. And I'm like, oh, good, because I enjoy applique, and I like doing machine applique. So I was like, that's good. I felt better that I didn't. I felt better that hand applique is not the only way to do well yeah. at a show. You could do machine and be good. And even more exciting, her Beatles quilt is going to be. I don't know if it's currently on display or was recently on display in Paducah to show the back. I know. I thought that was great. So the museum, the National Quilt Museum in Paducah is doing a display of backs of quilts, which you never get to see at the National Quilt Museum because they only have the fronts displaying. And what's cool about her Beatles quilt is it's got all the words to every Beatles song written on the back of it. In her and her sister's handwriting. Which I think is way cool. I mean, I don't know that we think about backs that way. I know we talked about backs last episode, but um, I just thought that was a neat kind of tip that you can do. I bet if she gave that quilt to someone, she would still fold it so the front would show, though. No, when they I don't. <laughs> <laughs> this will be a standing argument between back gate and is back. No, <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, but no, the, I enjoyed her class. It was a great class. I think I walked away appreciating machine applique more than I did, and and the fact that I enjoy machine applique, um, I like that. She uses the blanket stitch or the buttonhole stitch, I've heard people call it, although there is a difference in technically how that's done. But um, I, I, that's what I use, so I like how that stitch works out. I know a lot of people use zigzag, but I really liked it. It was a great class. If you see a Sue Nichols class, take it. Mm -hmm, I think she's a sure. wonderful teacher. And I like the technology she did. And, of course, you know, we're kind of techies a little bit here. But she used a camera um, during class to project what you were seeing her do at the needle. And so you didn't feel like you were, like, hovering mm -hmm. around. Did she do that? I'm sure oh, she yeah. did that in the feathers class, yeah, too. But you didn't feel like you were hovering. You could see it on the screen. And I just really thought that was a great way to teach a class, too. It takes more setup and, of course, more for a, a teacher to travel with that stuff. But I really liked it. I was like, yeah. Well, speaking of technology and classes, we had the original Sewing and Quilt Expo here in Atlanta just this weekend. And I took two classes there. I had one that was very traditional. Right. Uh, Sharon Shamber in hoopless hand quilting. But her daughter also taught a number of classes, and I took one of hers. And she also uses technology. Um, I took a project-specific class, so it was making a particular quilt pattern. And she said, you know, and here's tips on identifying value for your quilt. And it right. was the black and white filter. And then also about how to do collages to see, like, maybe you finished one block and you're like, whoo, girl, that was a block. And you kind of, you maybe need a little more impetus and inspiration to keep going. And it was like, well, 
take a picture of the block and put it in a photo collage and oh right yeah that's a good know, idea see it on your phone to be like okay this is going to be worth it versus like Ooh, yeah my jacked up block maybe should well because sometimes you yeah sometimes you look at blocks and go okay one block has got thirty or forty pieces in it yeah. do I want to do this fifty times for a quilt you know I I can I get that. Totally. And that's a good idea to use your phone to do that. I know. This one's like, crazy. I've got like 11 trillion pieces I in know, there. I know. It is. I think it is 11 trillion. I'm not really sure what that number is, but it it's is a lot. that many. She heard me complain about it at a well, court know, retreat. More than a handful is a waste. So. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, the show, so the sewing expo, we went to the sewing expo. We weren't recognized. I was quite disappointed. Well, only by people that already knew us yeah. in our guild. <laughs> that totally doesn't count. That doesn't count. So, uh, but we went to the sewing expo. I had some good vendors. I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I bought some bobbins. Oh, my gosh. I was very excited about my bobbins. <laughs> I know. What do you buy? I mean, what do you go? When you go to one of those shows, what do you go and look for? You know, it used to be fabric because you'd be like, "Oh, I'm going to get a deal," but now I have enough fabric, yeah. so I don't. I don't buy fabric so much. It's more: is there specialty thread? Are there tools thread. that maybe local quilt shops don't carry or that I've not seen before? Oh yeah, the tools patterns. are my kind of yeah. Patterns, yeah, because you don't always see patterns. Well, patterns in particular when <clears throat> the item is there, so you get a chance because it. I bought a non-quilt pattern. It's for like a little wreath or a candle. I've seen whatever. it on the internet. Yeah, but you, you don't. But and I have seen it in person as well now. So I'm like, okay, that is something. Yes, I could see a use for that or a, a great gift. A gift. Yeah, that's what mine yeah. will be for. So being able to see it in person is nice as well. And even just going and ogling, you know, Christy Fincher's quilts. Even though I just took the one class, like she had her other quilts there from her oh, other classes. Yeah. So I was like, did Sharon have any of hers there? She did not that I saw. We just had muslin Ooh, samples. I am there. a Sharon Schomburg fan. I love yeah, yeah. her quilts. Yeah, I think because her she, quilts in the museum are some of my favorite quilts yeah. ever. She ever. was teaching mostly technique, not project based classes. Which is, I mean, to learn technique from Sharon, oh, yeah. it's she's a great teacher. Great teacher. I've enjoyed the classes that I've taught for. Her. So, um, and then Shop Pop was this weekend. Yes. I didn't do it. I, I well, and it's a huge deal in Atlanta. What's this smaller shop than a hop? hop. <laughs> it um, wasn't a jump. It wasn't a hop. I went to one shop. <laughs> I went to one shop. I know. I went to a different shop than you did, though. Okay. But I only went to one shop. But shop hop's a big deal in Atlanta. And if you want to come here, I'm telling you, if you're a quilter, this is the weekend to come because you get the sewing expo, you get the shop hop, and also there's American Craft Council usually this weekend, which is. Um, Really high end artisan craft stuff, so uh, very cool. It was. It's been a busy weekend. So yes, yeah. So, well, what we're going to talk about today? What are we going to talk about today? Uh, today we are all about thread. We got your piecing thread, your quilting thread, your other thread, thread other thread, thread related thread, stuff. Thread, thread, stuff. and thread because it's important. More thread, lots of thread. Well, there's so I've many seen. choices of what to use and why to use it and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let us dive into piecing thread. Okay, let's dive into piecing thread. So what's your go-to piecing thread? Aerofill. Aerofill, 50 weight, two ply. That, yeah. I, yeah, so, but I don't always piece in this color. Just a little. No, <laughs> and that's a good question. Like, so Aerofill is my go-to thread, um, the orange, Cone bobbin, and the reason I like it is it's fifty weight, so it's it's fifty weight, right? Yeah, that's a fifty weight. You it's know, 50 it's fifty weight because an orophil, which is how I pronounce it, it's orange. Orophil, okay. Which uh, the green, if you get an orophil green, that's a forty weight, and then I think the red is something. So the fifty wool. weight, and it's two ply, so there's two strands that are twisted together. Yes, and it's um, Egyptian long cotton, so it's a cotton which thread, long, which is a long thread. Yes, instead of short thread, uh, short cotton. Um, I like it because it's thin. I can get more on my bobbin mm -hmm. than I can other, um, like a 30, if it's a lower number, it's a thicker thread. Yes. So if it's 40 weight, it's thicker than 50, 30 weights thicker than 50, right? So a lower number. And then the number that's behind the slash two, three, that's how many threads are twisted in yes. it. So, um, this is my go-to. I use, um... I always use the same thread in the bobbin and the top. I do as well. Now, do you mean weight or color or both? 
Usually, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, usually both. I, I usually, if I if this is in my, if I'm using this in my top thread, I'm using it as my bobbin thread. Yes, I do the but same. But I know not everybody does that. Well, there are some exceptions. There are some exceptions. For piecing. For piece. Well, what? not for piecing. Not well, for then, piecing. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. But, but yeah. So I usually go with like a medium lightish gray color for my piecing. Unless I'm doing strictly like all dark fabrics and then I'll use a darker thread, either a navy Do or black. You, so you don't, Matt, like if you're doing a red, you don't use red. You nobody got time for that. I, I used to. <laughs> when I first started, I used to. I mean, I used to use red thread if I was piecing on red, whatever. Um... But you're right. I use a like a medium gray or a medium yeah. cream. Now, if I'm doing, you know, a quilt a where it is definitely like uh, all red fabrics, then I might use a red thread. But if I most of my quilts are, you know, multicolored, and right. the gray just kind of helps blend in all together. And especially when you press your seams to the side, you don't see it. If you press right. your seams open and you're you get that tension, that, you're yeah, going to more likely see to see the threads. Yeah. yeah. So. Next question, pre-wound bobbins. You know, I don't, I, the only place I use pre-wound bobbins is my embroidery machine. Okay. And and that you never see because you've got the stabilizer underneath it when it's embroidering it. But I never, I, even in my long arm, and I know a long, a lot of, and I know it's another topic, but I know a lot of other long armors use pre-wound bobbins and I don't. Yeah, I don't either. I, I know use, you can buy them with 60 weight threads, so sometimes bobbin weight would yeah. be a Thinner weight. And what that, is it? Bobbin line. Superior threads got bobbin line. I'm not sure of the brand. I, no, I, I think, think there's a couple. Yeah, that do it. Yeah, it's um, a bobbin weight thread. But you know that will come in white or black, which is pretty limiting. And I guess the deal, you know, with a a thinner weight on the bobbin means that your bobbin thread to me is more likely to. Poke come up. up, yeah. But if you're piecing and you're pressing your seams to the side, you're not going to see it. Yeah, that's but that's not one a of the reasons. Another reason why I wouldn't do that. Yeah, I always, I I always match my top and bobbin thread. So, and I do that in long arm quilting. And I do that in piecing. I like the know. curtains match your drapes or the carpet <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> it's no <laughs> curtains and drapes. Good time. It's the old adage, you know, you're. <laughs> Your fingernail polish needs to match your purse or something. No, it's supposed to match your toenail polish. Toenail polish. No, I, we are bad. There's, I think bad. there's a okay. There's Whatever these are, idioms. Is this an idiom? No, your purse is supposed to match your shoe color. I thought it matched your belt. No shoe color. I don't wear belts. <laughs> and we can't wear Please white. Note, this is not a fashion show. <laughs> <And we> Obviously, <laughs> we can't wear white until after Easter. I thought it was Memorial Day. <laughs> no, it's Easter. I'm almost certain that one's right. It's Easter, good Southerner. You can't wear white till after Easter. And then you can wear white. Then you can't wear white after Labor Day. Like, you have what to. What about white bobbin thread? <laughs> Let's bring really it back. Has to bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> 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 bobbin you're the one who started with the curtains and I don't know. I it's being you're funny. The, Sometimes it doesn't work. Trail, yeah, because I don't always follow you. So there's, I need to help. The brain goes fast. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, you use aerophil as well as I do. Except um, I use orophil. Orophil. <laughs> I probably... Okay, it's orophil. You're right. We'll be in trouble. They don't sponsor us, so, you know, there Well, is. now is an exciting opportunity <laughs> for them. We should make sure they see Maybe this. Maybe they sponsor us. We'd pronounce it right. <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> so, Alex. <laughs> We don't even know him. All right, so um, <laughs> yet, <laughs> how do you store your thread? Let me ask you poorly. this question. Poorly? <laughs> what do you mean poorly? Oh, well, you're supposed to like put it in a wine vault with temperature control and treat it gently and play soft music for it and keep it out of sunlight. Mine is like hanging up on the wall and there's an air conditioning vent right below it, blowing up on it, drying it out, putting lint on it. Yeah, you're not supposed to do that. That's like bad. You're right. That is bad. I know. I store mine in plastic, not tight seal plastic containers, but plastic containers. All mine are in plastic containers, but not like plastic bags because that'll dry it out and make it brittle. And if and if you're noticing, um, like if you look at your thread and it's a different color on top than after you unwind a few yeah, pieces of it, guess what? You've got old thread. Also, if it breaks consistently. 
Like you can't sew very long before it's breaking. It's it's brittle, and which means not... it's been sitting under the air conditioning vent at Pam's okay. house. But mine doesn't break because I dipped my thread. <gasps> and we talked about this before, and we got a question of like, what is that? But mineral oil, the kind you would get on the digestive aid aisle. So yes. you look super classy when you go to the grocery store and get your giant bottle. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, mine's in a. I didn't have it bottled to show people, but I know. Um, and then you put it in a container that makes it suitable for dipping, and you just dip the cone thread in. Yep. And then you pull it out, let it drip a bit, get some paper towels, blot it. Don't rub it because that'll unwind your thread and jack but it up. Blot it, yeah. Blot it. Really good. And then it'll so you'll be like, it. wait, but it looks darker now. But that's okay. It'll yeah. because it will dry. It will not put oil or anything weird on your quilt. Because the thread goes through the tension discs in your machine, and that will squeeze out any excess of the mineral oil. Mm -hmm. And then it looks beautiful in your quilt, and it helps it's amazing. moisturize the thread. So that, it does. The tip comes from Sharon Chamber. So. Yes. And she dips every thread, so don't even worry if it's poly or cotton or whatever, wool. Yeah. I don't use wool to piece, though. Uh, no, not to piece. No. No. I tried to use it to free motion, and it didn't work. So do you care if it's poly or cotton in piecing? In piecing, yes. Really? Yeah. So what do you use? Because I don't, I have cotton. maybe two spools of polyester thread ever. Really? And like mo like and polyester is... I would use for sewing clothes, not for sewing quilts. Oh, wow. No. Well, I piece with cotton. I know there's a big thing about you have to piece with cotton because it's cotton material. Well, and you get into the whole traditional way back in the day, people, yeah. like the polyester threads were not as refined as they are now. And so as quilts aged and got used, the the poly was so strong mm -hmm. that the cotton fabric would shred around it. Right. That's, and But yeah. we don't have that problem now. We have much better polyester thread. So I don't think it's a problem. I also have the fear of a hot iron melting the polyester thread. I've never had a problem with that. See, that's another old thing. Because polyester thread used to melt when you pressed it. <laughs> yeah. I've never had a problem with that. And that's all poly thread. Yep. No, I've so, used poly thread to quilt, but we'll talk about that. Yeah, in just a bit. So no, I've never had a problem with that. But I, I, I think it's just preference, though. Yeah. Like I, I use cotton, cotton thread. Fifty-two. If you use fifty-three, it's thicker. So yeah, I like the two ply. Ball. Yeah. So that's what I use on the piecing. Now, do you use something different for hand piecing? No, I don't. Well, I use Mettler usually for hand piecing because it's a smaller. Thing to carry around, spool, solid spool to carry around. I knew you were. <laughs> you were waiting for me to go. What is this? It's a spool of thread. Um, I usually a use Mettler because it's smaller to carry around. I have, um, and I, I think have it's... one hand piecing project. It's English paper piecing, and so I've I've been using the same spool. Well, yeah. Once you you only need one spool. Yeah. That lasts for. If you're hand piecing, you don't go through it like machine. I've gone through. I the finished big... on the quilt that I'm hand piecing. I finished the spool. Did you really? It's gonna be full sized. Oh, that's right. It's that big hog and quilt. Ugh. And then that tulip pink. Thing? Yes, I'm on my last row. It's very exciting. That's Yay. why I needed to take the hand quilting class from Sharon because I'm like, I'm gonna get through it this year. Oh, I should have taken the I'm hand not quilting gonna, class. It's gonna take me two years to quilt it. But... <laughs> All right, so we've talked about storage. We've talked about um, so two things can make your thread go bad: environment. Mm -hmm. And um, storage, and we kind of alluded to both those things. So, if you store your thread in your house, you're probably okay, but try not to store it in a shack. Uh, in a, it <laughs> doesn't need to be too hot or too cold. You have to think about humidity. But if you're living there, it's usually good. Don't set it right over heat vents or air conditioning vents. <laughs> I put my, <laughs> I put all mine in okay, plastic but, containers. But mine looks good. Yeah, but mine will last rainbow. longer. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's one thing so, about well, here's thread. Here's the deal, Lynn. I, you know, I sew a lot. She, she does. So sew I go a lot. through it, so she it's does. not like it sits around long enough to go bad. I That's just keep buying it. I sew a lot too, though. Um, I I think my favorite thing about thread, though, is color. Like I am so. It you know like when you were a kid and you got the big coloring box, the sixty four crayons that I kept in color order, and yes. then I. Still had the That's same how I 64 feel about color thread. Like, box. I need all the colors of orange. I just don't need one color of orange. I need all the colors. Yeah. 
I know. It's great until like you hand your 64 crayon box to your kids and you're like, neat, dump, and it's all messed up. <laughs> like, why did I have children? They can't. Because you can't play nice with my stuff. <laughs> they have to ask permission to play with my Millennium Falcon. They know that. Well, <laughs> as they should. Mm -hmm. Really, seriously. All right, so should we take a break? And then we're going to show you some pictures, up close pictures of the quilt behind us. Cool. Hi, I'm Lynn, and we are going to talk about thread for quilting now. Thread for quilting. Quilting long arm, quilting domestic. Hand quilting. All of the quilting? All the quiltings. All the quiltings. So what is your favorite thread for quilting? Same as it is for piecing. Ba -ba. Do you really? I That thin? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't need anyone scrutinizing all my jacked up stitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Do you use the same color as your background? Depends. On? What I want. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a fount of information today. Yes, you are. So, so uh, in general, because a lot of the quilts I do are scrap quilts and multicolor, and so I would say if I have a white background and then let's say some hunter stars pieced in there, mm -hmm. I would probably go with the white thread, unless I was doing custom quilting in the blocks, and then the background would match the thread color there, and then within the blocks themselves, if I was like doing some kind of fancy custom thing, you know, like you do, mm. in the Hunter Star, yeah. then I would probably match the thread to that. And then I would match top and bobbin thread. I always match top and bobbin thread. I have done it where I've not. And you've paid for and it. And I have not do, done that again. Yeah, I, I, I just was, think that's, I mean, not that it's a hard, fast rule, but if you put the same color in the top and bottom, you're not going to deal with any kind of you know, because the tension, dots. yeah, the dots will happen. Yeah. And I know we've already talked about markers, but you don't want to do that for uh, a whole well, quilt. You need like a whiteout pin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can only mark darker typically with that. Yeah. And I think how to get by that is have a big, busy back. So oh, if it sure. bothers you, don't put solid on your bag. No, make no. it busy. And, and that then was you can't the Nichols tip. She's like, I always pick busy fabrics for the bag because then you can't see anything that's yeah. going on back there. Yeah. Which I, uh, I'm kind of on and off on that. It's like sometimes I like a busy back because I don't want you to see what I'm doing. But sometimes I do want you to see it. So I've chosen things to make sure it stands out on the back. So That's because you always fold it and present it wrong to people. Yeah, that's it. That's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't quilt on the domestic. I quilt on my long arm and I use Isocor, which is a poly thread. Mm -hmm. and it's shiny. And it's shiny. And I, and it's one of those threads that um, I think it's a forty weight. I think it's a forty weight. I've never seen where it says. Yeah, I haven't either. But I think it's oh, a it 40 says number weight. forty on there. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a forty weight, and I'm not sure if it's two ply or not. I think it is two ply, um, maybe three. I'd have to look. But I use this because I can get it in all the colors that are my little heart's desires because they have tons and tons of colors. The other thing about this, and I use this, I kind of got stuck on this brand. I'm kind of a brand loyal person. So once I find a thread or something I really like, I kind of buy that, whatever. But um, the other reason I like this is because I get it all the colors I want. And I started using it on embroidery. Oh, okay. So that's when I started collecting this thread was uh, machine embroidery, and it doesn't fade. You can bleach this stuff and it'll still be orange. It's incredible how color solid it is. It doesn't lose its color, which I like. Yeah. Now, do you use variegated? I have. On? On? Art. Art. Projects. Typically. You know, that was one of the Sue Nichols trips, tips for um, machine applique was use a variegated thread. Why? And she uh, and she uses all and she actually sells a line with superior threads. Oh, that's the right. King she Tut line. It. Yeah, she has her name on some of it. This one I don't think is hers, but um, the, uh, Sue Nichols, where she does variegated. Okay. And she likes the way it looks, and yeah. she has more quilts in the museum than I do. So hey, well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And I, um, the other one that I like that's a big one is Superior. I like Superiors for long yeah, arm. I have. 
found. It has more lint. If you're, I yeah. deal, I think when you're quilting, you have to think about the lint more than you do when you're piecing. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, I think probably because you're using more specialty thread in that case. Yeah, maybe. Because polyester, there's no lint virtually that I've yeah. seen when I've used no, it. No, you're right. There's... But when I've used the cotton, even with Orphil, which is a very low lint, in my experience, I know other quilters have oh, used it, it and said lint. Um, but really, you should be opening up your bobbin case and cleaning it out, you know, yes. every project, essentially. And I do that more with quilting than I do with yes. piecing. Do yes. you find that to be true on your domestic? Yes, and I think because there's batting lint that gets in there. I mean, that for makes me. totally not, sense. Maybe not for you because you're no, not quilting on the but, domestic. But I, I make sure and I clean out my bobbin area um, before I start quilting and almost every time I change a bobbin uh -huh. uh, on the long arm, yeah. Just because if I'm using a cotton thread, it's going to have a lot more lint. Mm -hmm. And I do like variegated. I'm quilting a quilt right now with a red variegated um, superior thread that I really like. It's it's turning out beautiful. It's on a red background and red variegated. It's giving me just a little dimension that I like. I think it's oh, cool. turning out nice. So I, I like variegated. Now, is it variegated on a solid background or is yeah. it variegated on a busy background? No, it's variegated on a solid background. It just gives you a little... I don't know, dimension. Now, if you're using color thread on a vastly different background and you're quilting, it's gonna be obvious. It's gonna be obvious if you mess <laughs> up. So you have to kind of, you know, give yourself grace in that you're not gonna do everything perfect. Like last night, I was uh, y'all have seen pictures of my dogs if you've watched earlier episodes. So I was quilting away, had my headphones in, do 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 do, do making little circles in this vine stem. Right? Didn't the dogs were down here asleep, which they're normally down here asleep. So they were down here asleep. Well, Josie decides it's supper time. So she comes over and she's like pawing me. Like, mom scared me to death. So I was like, Rrr. so now that circle's like, <laughs> it's not very good. So I will be doing similar on my machine, except, you know, I'm moving. The yeah, sandwich. you're doing that. And then I'm doing this. the cat will jump from the cutting table like a little cat toboggan. Shing, and then over to the cat bed that's on the other side. <laughs> so it's like a drive-by? Yeah, pretty much. So just enough to jump the... Yeah, the so then choice. what do you do? You just go, yeah. <laughs> do you take it I'm out? Just I mean, a there's a rule. In there. the, a friend of ours gave the rule, if you can find your mistake after it's quilted and bound, you can take it out. But then I don't want to. I so know, I'm that's done. why you don't take it out. I, I don't like to go back and take out work. Oh, You've yeah. done more than I have. On my long arm, she's like, I don't like this, takes it out. I was like, I'd have left it. But No, the best part, like if your tension is super jacked up, and for me, it's usually that um, the bobbin thread, like on my domestic, isn't catching the little finger where it needs to go. And so it just like, wee! It's like having a party, just coming yeah. out like mad. Yeah. That's a common one. Or like the top tension is jacked up and the, the top threads are coming down and the bobbin's too tight. And so then it's very easy because <laughs> you just sort of snip and shing <laughs> because there's like no tension yes. on the threads. You That's need the best tension. kind of that is That is key. Tension <laughs> is key. Like tension. Tension's good. Do we need more tension in the show? We need more tension in the show, right. <laughs> That's exactly what we need. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Ooh. So, oh, do what? you use monofilament? I do use monofilament. That is the one time, though, I don't use it in the bobbin. Oh, yeah. Don't no. do that. Ugh. Cool. Mm. Ugh. Yeah, you can tell we're not fans of that. I do use monofilament. <laughs> I use it in some machine applique, and there's mm -hmm. some te techniques yep. you use in machine applique with monofilament. And it comes in two colors. It comes in, like, well, two colors that I know of. Clear comes in smoke. clear and smoke. So and if you're using yeah. a really dark... Fabric, you can use smoke. Yeah. Um, I like the Superior Threads monofilament. I haven't, I've used the Sulky. That yeah, one's good. Yeah, Sulky. I like it. Um, I don't know of another one. I, you have to slow down your sewing. And loosen the top tension. And loosen the top tension. Yes. And? Slow down. That was my big, I got very frustrated with that when I first started using it because I want to sew as fast as I'm used to sewing and you have to slow down. Yeah. You have to slow down. Now, have you found that this, when you go to put it on your machine and it just goes, whee, and it unspools? 
Yes. Oh, I have a tip for that. Oh, good. Um, so take your little spool of thread about an hour before you want to start sewing and put it in the freezer. Really? Really. And so this comes from a fellow podcaster. Oh, wow. Crafty okay. Garden Mom. Hey, to you. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> stick it in the freezer for about an hour, and then the coldness will help keep it from wildly unspooling. Now, you may think, well, what if I forget will it that do it's in that? there? Okay, then that's a question for, because this is similar, metallic threads. That will I it do know. it for metallic threads? I don't know. That would be a good experiment. Yeah. Do you quilt with a lot of metallics? I have one spool of metallic, and it's woven such that it has like a polyester kind of base thread and then two metallic so it's more like it. this one yes it's more like that one which i would and never phrase and goes crazy yeah this phrase like crazy so i have not tried putting metallic in the freezer so mm. i don't know give it a shot i don't know i haven't done that one metallic but I have found even when I've forgotten that my monofilament was in the freezer, it's still been okay if I go back like four hours later. <laughs> Just four hours? Like if I put something in the freezer, it'd be there like six months. Well, I got a, like a regular oh, four-hour wow. craving for ice Look. cream, so I got to go see if the ice cream fairy visited. <laughs> <laughs> you have an ice cream fairy? Sometimes. We just have a gas. Then, then the ice cream fairy. We just have a gas fairy at our house, so it shows up and fills up the car with gas. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. It's crop dust. And fills my car with gas, and I love it. So I make sure that it, my gas tank. <laughs> For those of you listening but not watching, I did lean to the side as if I was cutting them loose. I did not actually cut them loose because I am not the gas fairy. <laughs> <laughs> we might need a moment for Lynn to compose herself. So I'm just going to vamp. Let, I'm going to talk about hand quilting. <laughs> okay, good. Here you go. Have a tissue. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to take a break. <laughs> I'm going to tell a story about when this happened to me recently. <laughs> Oh my gosh! You're so, not gonna let me take a break. You're making now me I'm gonna nervous. keep talking while you okay. compose yourself. Oh dear God! So I started laughing so hard the other day because my husband <laughs> used to be a professional wrestler and has stories, and I didn't realize a, a current friend of ours was a radio announcer. Seriously, I'm crying. during the same time that my husband was a wrestler, and apparently, as a radio announcer and like local market, would promote wrestling shows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just spit tank if I drink and something. And so out of nowhere, we're like getting the kids ready for school one morning. And my husband starts talking about this radio. You know, our friend was this radio announcer. He's like promoting the show. He's like, you call me a stinker and I'm going to teach you a lesson. <laughs> and this struck me as so funny because I think, you know, back in, in our family lore, when I was growing up, like we would call each other stinkers all the time. And I was just envisioning like me and my sister. <laughs> how, did, how did we get here? Like, because we started talking about thread. I know. Your gas oh. fairy comment. That'll teach you to bring up art. I was, it wasn't, no, it has to do with, it has to do with gasoline being put in the car. And I always <laughs> run out of gasoline. And so. I know. Okay. But I'm I'm raising a twelve year old oh, boy. And, and, and no, he's... no. So <laughs> the, it, we will it, go ahead. <laughs> I think so hand quilting. Hand quilting. Tangent. I don't hand quilt. Yes. I mean I have I've taken a class in hand quilting, but I It didn't stick. I think it was before you know when you take classes maybe before you're ready for them? Like yes. I wanted to, oh. I, I, I wasn't ready for that technique or I wasn't in a good place where I was going to do that. So I took the class before I was ready for it. I think if I went and took a hand quilting class now, I'd be more accepting mm -hmm. or more interested in it, I guess. I don't know. Or better. At, yeah. I've, my skills have come to a point where I think I could do that. Maybe that's it. <laughs> 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 so I've taken a class, but it's been a long time ago. Yeah, I so mine was this weekend. And, you know, I know I've seen the technique where you rock the needle. For When I took it from Sharon, she rocks the fabric, <clears throat> which is much more my jam, apparently. And it's hoopless because my, my feeling is, like, I've, I've had several people offer, like, oh, I've got a big frame. You could borrow it for this quilt that I'm working on. <laughs> like, that's just oh. going to be, like, a cat jungle jam at my house. 
Uh, no. So, and, <laughs> Cat uh, jungle gym. Jungle gym. So I thought, all right, let me work on this hoopless technique. And I do like it. Um, <laughs> although I'm not good at wearing a thimble. Yes, yeah, so I thought that was funny. So <laughs> like, I'd be like, okay, so, you know, the, Sharon <clears throat> had the thimble on her index finger. And first of all, I'm left-handed, so everything's backwards. And in high heels, because I'm the Ginger Rogers of quilting. <laughs> you are. So, so I'd yes. be like, well, but I know I, when I even hand piece, I tend to push with my middle finger, not with my index finger. So I'm like, all right, let me put it on my, my, in, my middle finger. Right. And, okay. So, but then my impulse is something's wrong with this finger, so I should use my ring finger. So no matter what finger I put the stupid <laughs> thimble on, I use the next one over. That didn't help. No, it didn't help. So it's that to defeats me is just, the whole purpose of thimble. Until I buy like four thimbles and there's no choice. <laughs> <laughs> then you can't hold if you've got four I just thimbles. look like a T-Rex trying to quilt. <laughs> 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 then you can't hold the needle because you can't, the thimbles oh, aren't gripping the needle. But had thread pullers, which are different. So my thimble, I have like a hybrid where it's kind of a, like a rubbery base and then there's a metal tip on it. So you can still push, but then it's got the grippy part where you can. Oh, use, but mine had, are all stupid expensive silver ones. Yeah, she had like. <laughs> that I love. Rubbery. It's really quilter bling. I just wear the necklace with the thimbles on it. So it's like, you know, quilter bling. They see you rolling, they hate you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, she had thread Cut pullers, scissors. which are like rubber things. That, that to me, I also found my finger got really sweaty. It's attractive. Like, look at my sweaty finger. And then I'm showing everyone my middle finger in class. I was on time that in quilting class, but yeah. that's another story. Never for mind. another episode? Yeah, that's okay. another story for another episode. We're not going there. So the, these thread pullers that had like a space for your nail to breathe and that you... You can still push with it, but the deal is you're trying to pull the needle out instead of like push it all the way through. So they oh, were kind okay. of rubbery. Oh, that would be good. Yes. So I I'm would gonna, like that. I'm gonna give those a shot. I still have to finish this stupid last row that I'm piecing first. But so, but did you what, that hand quilting class? Was it just like they you're doing a we block? We just had like a little twelve inch sample, sample that was marked. Now what Sharon likes to do is use imprint or embroidery thread. Yeah, embroidery thread. Like, and this DMC. is just some DMC, not the um, run DMC. Because <clears throat> we don't have to walk this way. But you have to quilt this way. <laughs> so she likes this thread, and she will use, like, two strands of it because okay. it grips the fabric and creates more of the dimple that you get with hand quilting, as opposed to an orophil, which glides through the fabric, but you don't get m as much of that... Mm -hmm the compression that you get when you make the stitches. Right. So the Orphil tends to sort of glide through it, whereas the embroidery thread will, you know, create that dimple, which is a look she likes. Right. So yeah, depending I, on what look you like, pick whatever you want, you know. Yeah. I like embroidery thread. I have tons of it. I have a lot of the screen. I think I had some ambitious Christmas projects that I've since abandoned. <laughs> well, <laughs> and we were going to talk about that in the next um, segment. So do, let's take another break, another okay. little close-up at the quilting going on here in the background, and then we'll be right back. So, welcome back. We have a little bit more to cover still on thread. Water-soluble thread. I've not used it. <gasps> I know. If I, I, pearls, I I'd be clutching them. <laughs> I've not used water soluble thread. I know it exists. I have. I know. I just, I haven't used it. Why, have do, you, used why it. do you use oh, it? So I know of two uses. One, I've used it for trapunto, which is <clears throat> where you oh, add extra stuffing or an extra layer of batting to really bring some You've dimension. You've done trapunto? Yeah. I'm impressed. I took a class. Oh, I haven't done trapunto. And then I made trapunto. one thing and I turned it into a placement because I'm like, yeah, there it is. <laughs> I haven't done trapunto, but I do kind of fake, you know, I double bat and yeah. that gives me that. Well, with Trapunto, it's the, the extra batting is just for that particular shape. So right, you've got yeah, exactly. So blunt scissors you use to kind of... But the deal is you would um, quilt around or stitch around the extra piece of batting in the shape that you want with water-soluble thread and a regular bobbin. And then you go in with blunt scissors and trim the batting to just that one shape. And then you would, you know, do your traditional layer with the quilt sandwich with the back and the batting and the top and then you you know quilt you know again around it with the regular thread and then when you wash the quilt or wet it or whatever you're doing right. then that water soluble thread disappears but you that holds it that extra batting in place until you get the rest of the quilting done yeah i haven't done that the second use 
that this number two that Sharon just gave in the hand quilting class, we were talking about basting and for a particularly large quilt, you know, it's a little cumbersome. But she suggested if you want to baste on your long arm for hand quilting, use water soluble thread to baste oh, it. Oh, that is awesome Isn't idea. That a nice idea. That is a great that's idea. Like, like that's worth house. the price of the class right that there. See? To come to your long arm and paste my giant. Baste. Ball. Yeah. That so is a really yeah. that is a brilliant idea. That's a good yeah. that's a good tip. Very but cool. especially here in the South. It's when you're wearing humid. your white shoes in I the know, summer. I know, we're going to get comments about that. <laughs> you need to store it, like, in a plastic bag. Yes. So, because the humidity will break it down. That's sure. true. I use um, water-soluble stabilizer oh, yeah. for embroidery stuff. And, yeah, it has to be a seal-tight plastic mm -hmm. bag. You don't yeah. want to not store that in the... You know, not that our houses are really humid, but we're used to a different humidity than other parts Yo, of the country yeah. are. Well, I know in the world. Be, yeah, exactly. For sure. So, definitely. So, I have you ever done bobbin work? Ugh, no. <laughs> I'm like, what? Why? I can't see what's happening. It's on the back. I don't. Look yeah, like, yeah. I've seen it done. And I'm like, right. Oh, it looks amazing. It does I look amazing when you see it done. So, to do bobbin work, you need to get probably a secondary bobbin case mm -hmm. is what most people suggest because you have to loosen up the tension on it pretty big. Um, and you can use these thicker threads that will not go through your tension disc on the top thread of your machine. And you load the bobbin of, with these thicker threads. You can use pearl cotton. You can use embroidery. You can use, um, which I love those I pearl love cottons. On that one. Um, <laughs> The Villiani Pro Cotton, those are so nice. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you can use those, load them on your bobbin, and then you sew upside down. So if you want whatever the stitches to show up on the front of your quilt, like if this is my front, this right here, I'm putting it on the machine like this so that my needle is going through it and pulling up the bobbin thread. And as I move it in quilting, it will have that thread on this side. So that's how you do bobbin work. Um, it's really kind of cool to see it done. You see it in a lot of more art quilts than other stuff, but definitely a unique way to use thicker thread, like this razzle-dazzle thread that Ricky Tim sells with superior threads. Um, but couching and, and oh, that yeah. kind of stuff is where you're gonna use the thicker threads. Couching, I do a lot of couching, I love couching. I'll couch yarn and I've done stuff it on like, like really small art pieces. Yeah, small art pieces. I don't do it on the big stuff, but you can. Um, the other thing is, we saw that we were at the expo this weekend <laughs> and we saw this thread and we're just gonna have to ask because we don't know. There was thread that was fusible thread. I have no, I, I, I've tried to think for two days since we saw that. It's like, I have no idea how to use that. I'm, I don't well, even know why I want to use that. Well, and to me, like, all right, if you've gone to the trouble of there's probably stitching some, something, you've already attached it. So why, why do am you I extra using it? it as well? Yeah. I, I, and part of me is like, there's got to be some brilliant reason that I'm missing. Oh, yeah. But uh, so if... the only other thing I can think of is like you lay down a little line of it and then you press it. And I'm like, well... Why wouldn't you just use like the quarter inch fusible yeah, tape. tape or whatever? Right, exactly. I don't know. I don't know. I I'm, I've not figured out the feasible thread. So please edging. leave a comment and educate us because we yes. don't know. I yes. mean, admittedly, maybe we could have Googled it in the two days since we saw it, but why should we do the work? <laughs> <laughs> it's cool to chat with friends. You all should chat with us. Yeah. So any other like extra? I mean, I definitely do. Oh, do you like, um, if I'm doing embroidery, do you use silk threads? No, only because I don't own any. <laughs> They're expensive. Oh, I got to use a piece of Sharon Chamber Let Us Cut Off, like a length of thread to use. It was very fancy. What kind was it? It was French. French thread? Yes. She's going to start carrying it in her shop. <laughs> and we're all like, let's try to pronounce it. Oh, we should not try to pronounce it. We're not, we're not good with the accents. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do know people who use silk threads, and they're gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, very much sheen. I don't know about the how easy they are to sew with, though, yeah. so I don't know about that. Well, the piece that I was using was a thicker thread, and I, 
<laughs> I had to bust out like the Grandma Eddie special needle threader <laughs> because it, we were having trouble getting it through the eye of the needle. And mm. I like shared that little tool around. It's thing it looks like it's got a dime and then a little diamond piece of wire coming out. And um, so many people like in my half of the room used it. And we're like, oh, this is amazing. I'm like, this is like from the 70s. Literally, I inherited it when Grandma Eddie passed away. <laughs> and yeah. I have like a dozen of them. Yeah. Uh, incredibly handy for when you're trying to thread, particularly thick thread, onto a needle. Yes, you definitely need to know if you're hand quilting or doing any kind of crazy quilting, that kind of stuff. You use different needles mm -hmm. than, you know, other needles. Um Wool thread. Is this wool? It looks wool. This is not wool. This is a cotton, but this is wool. And so I had yeah. won like a sampler pack from Orophil uh, because they sponsored someone else. Hint, hint. Um, yeah. And I tried to use it for free motion. I think it's just too thick. And, or Because I tried it with a top stitch needle, which has a bigger eye. I tried it with like a 90 and 100 size needle and it didn't work. But I think what I'm going to do is use it as hand quilting thread for the project that I'm doing because it, it's the right color, but it is a wool. It's like a 12 weight. Which means it's big. I use this. How do you use it? For wool work. Like um, Sue Spargo stuff. Oh, yeah. Wool embroidery. Yeah, wool embroidery and wool applique. And if you're using wool, real wool, and wool thread and wool applique, it goes through. It's the most beautiful thing. It goes through it like butter. Mm -hmm. It is amazing to just that. It's really nice to stitch with. Especially for well, okay, I'm gonna get in trouble with the tech because I knocked stuff over. It's it's reminding me of Parks and Rec and the game that the guy invented, the cones of Dunshire or whatever. <laughs> when all these things stick up I have table. it. This is this is serger thread. Oh. So that's for sergers. My serger thread's not that tall. I don't know. But I also don't have a lot of colors. I have like I bought it because it was orange. Thing. Well. I know we're shocked to there. No surprise. <laughs> these are my threads. These Look, I have one threads. green. That's and these are yours. But I do like wool thread for wool applique and wool embroidery. And um, Lisa Bojean stuff. Uh, primitive gathering. Pri thank you. I couldn't remember. I was doing bare roots, but that's not hers. It's primitive gatherings. Mm -hmm. She uses wool. And I uh, took a great wool applique class using wool thread. Yeah. And they actually, get, it's expensive though. Wool thread Ooh, is yeah. not, wool's not cheap. I mean, no. when you're buying wool. And even the silk is, thread is not cheap either. No, the silk thread's not cheap. Well, you can have a huge investment in thread. Thread's a very expensive part of what Ooh, we do. Yes. You know, especially when you're like, oh, and I need all the colors. I remember as a kid, well, as a kid when I was in, learning how to cross stitch, this was like 25 cents. The DMC was like 25 cents. So you're like, oh, I can get a lot for $10. I get 12 now the same it's... greens with different numbers. And I... <laughs> <laughs> I think I have. Oh, and then the other kind of uh, embroidery thread is um, hand-dyed embroidery thread. Oh, yeah. Like Weeks does a hand-dyed and Gathering Threads does a hand-dyed. And they're gorgeous because they're very, most of those are variegated, so they yeah. just have that really pretty. But that's like more cross stitch, crazy quilting kind of stuff. Embellishments. Embellishments, and, yeah. yeah. So that's like specialty kind of thread. Um, that's all I have. I think we've talked a lot about thread. I know. If we haven't answered any of your thread questions or talked about what <laughs> thread questions you have, just uh, Facebook us or um, put it in a comment. Mm -hmm. Tell us what fusible thread is for. <laughs> yeah. Because we don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. And on metallic thread, whether you can keep it cold or not, that's a good question. I mean, that's just science. As we learned from the Mythbusters, it's just futzing around until you write it down. And so then we it's can science. <laughs> until you write it down, and it's science. No, it's a myth. All right. So, so this month's show is brought to you by Seventy Seven Peaches Enterprises, your one-stop shop for creative support. We'd like to thank Seventy Seven Peaches, Big Think Productions, Cotton Art Studio, and Hip to Be a Square for being part of the Stitch. You can find links to their sites on our show site, thestitchtvshow.com. And that's all we've got for this week episode. If you've enjoyed the show, please like us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and share it with your friends. Remember, the next virtual show, the so in, is Friday, <laughs> April 15th, 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast on our channel here on YouTube and on Google Plus. My podcast, Hip to Be a Square, will be out every Friday. 
And you can email us with any questions or comments at info at the Stitch TV show.com. All those details and more can be found on our website, the Stitch TV show.com. Tune in next month for more quilting chat with friends.